Right, so we've got some more incoming objects by the looks of it. And this article was actually published on Fox 12 and this news report on the 21st of November 2013. And it was seen over Portland. And because so many people actually saw this object, they could not just dismiss it. And really, the news report is an absolute joke. I mean, seriously, they're trying to explain this away as contrails. Contrails in the afternoon sunlight being lit up. You know, and people really do believe this. And I'm sure that there are even people that claim to be awake that believe this because they haven't actually researched it like I have and many others. They've just, as I've said in previous videos, floated along the surface with the collective consensus instead of actually going and separating yourself to seek an understanding of who you are and what is happening in these times. And so this is an incoming object. And this was uploaded on November the 21st. And in the news report, it says that it was seen three days in a row. Three consecutive days this object was seen in the same place. And this is because it's an incoming object. And as I said, after the magnetic crochet that we had on the 5th of November... Things have changed and we are going to start seeing a lot more activity up in the sky. A lot more of these incoming objects. And they are not going to be able to continue to try and explain them away as contrails in the sunset. And seriously, it's just ridiculous that that is what they're trying to do. But they are biding themselves as much time as they can. And they will get away with this as long as they can. So, we also had one reported on the 14th of November. Now, the guy that videotaped this one was from New Zealand. And he saw it two consecutive days in a row in the afternoon. Same thing. It's an incoming object. The reason you're seeing it day after day is because it's on the same path moving towards our planet. And when it moves across the sky, it's actually not really moving across the sky. It's actually our planet rotating, giving it the perception that it's moving across the sky. And eventually they just burn up, just like this one that was filmed over Melbourne in 2011. Now, this was just after the Japanese earthquake, the big one. And this was just when I started getting interesting, interested in all of this activity that started happening with space weather. And I'm not so easily convinced by the establishment when I see unusual things like this that it's a contrail. And the man that filmed this was just a normal everyday Australian who happened to see something unusual and he saw it two consecutive afternoons, maybe three actually, but it's definitely all videotaped. And this man also followed up on this because he wasn't even into any of this information until he'd seen this object and he wanted to, do, wanted to know. And he went and wrote to the Aviation Authority and they tried to pass it off as contrails in the same place in the sky, two consecutive nights in a row. On the second consecutive night, it breaks apart. It actually breaks apart. You can see that he films it. And we're being made to believe that this is just a contrail and we're idiots. And see, I was, you know, I was under the understanding back then when they were saying that this was contrails that they were covering something up. And 2011, we had a lot of incoming objects and a lot of falling satellites as well. And this was just at the beginning of the solar maximum that we're still in. We're still waiting for the peak of this solar maximum. But because the sun's not doing what it's supposed to do, they don't know what the hell's happening.
So we have these incoming objects. This one here over Melbourne, there's been plenty more seen. You can see them here. They always get explained away as rockets. But these ones in particular normally have the two tails. Okay, this one's excellent footage. I really do recommend watching this one. And now we've got this one over Oregon. And, you know, we're going to keep seeing them, as I said. After that crochet, magnetic crochet, Things started getting a little bit more active out there and trying to explain it away as a contrail and anyone that wants to believe that story, if you want to cling on to that story, that shows me that you're in fear and you just need to come to terms with the fact that we are going to see lots more incoming objects. Some may explode above the atmosphere, some may actually hit the planet and you just have to hope that you're probably in the place that you're meant to be because that's the only thing that's going to save you from them. Um, but they are definitely going to be coming. You can count on that. And I'm not trying to fear monger, but I'm just not going to bullshit people and play into all the crap, you know, and say that it's a contrail or harp or whatever anybody wants to believe it is because they don't possibly want to believe that they could be facing uh, an onslaught of incoming objects, you know, and I don't know why anybody would believe that that's not a possibility, you know, and it's like some, you know, mythical event that will never happen. I mean, it's happened before on our planet and it'll happen again. So, you know, it's even actually written down in our texts, you know, so it's actually happened in the memory of humanity even. Okay, there's accounts of comets and everything. So there's no reason not to believe that this isn't happening just because it hasn't happened in the 50 years or the 60 years that you've walked the face of this planet. Okay, and uh, the other really interesting thing that I wanted to bring your attention to was something that I found that was really cool with number synchronicity. Now, I find that a lot of these um, gamma ray bursts and even some of these flares uh, actually start at really interesting times, okay? Uh, normally, five fives, two twos, four fours, always double numbers, you know, somewhere in there. Um, in the time, normally the universal time. And um, I'm one of those people that actually sees lots of number synchronicities as well and I know that there are lots of people out there so I'm actually feeling more comfortable all the time talking about that because, you know, before it wasn't so many but now, I mean, nearly every person that I speak to that crosses my path now has had an experience with this number synchronicity to, to different levels. Mine's pretty full on, you know, I see it all the time, every day, you know, 22, 33, 55, 44, 144, um, you know, 11, 22, um, 11, 44, you know, 12, 12, 10, 10, uh, all different ones, you know, but they're actually um, subjective to you. So really just trying to go and look at what some website tells you they mean is not going to give you answers. The universe is speaking to you in code because that's what the universe pretty much is existent upon. It's all mathematical code. Everything's in code. And so because we're now um, experiencing the ether returning, as I mentioned in that Viking video I did, the ether's returning. And so because of that, we're more in sync with our ethereal body and our ethereal self. And so if you are one of these people that are seeing these number synchronicities, it means that you are moving into your ethereal self because it's your actual... It's your ethereal self that's actually giving you those signals to look at the clock at that time and see these synchronicities. And so what you've got to do is actually be mindful of what you're thinking about at that time and why you were guided, your higher self guided you to look at that number to, to make sure that you have um, you know, an understanding of whatever that was, was important. It's a guidepost. And so this is what I'm talking about when you get your guide, you know, your guidepost is being aware of them and uh, understanding, okay, so whatever that was that I was thinking about when that happened, okay, it must be something with it, you know, think about it a little bit more at some different perspectives and with some different angles and try and process it. I mean, I can only say based on me, I mean, everyone's different, you know, so you have to come at it from where you're intuition guides you to and trust that again because it really is about trusting our intuition again and I'm going to keep saying that guys because that's what it's going to count you know that's what's going to matter whether you make it through or don't okay really in the end and this is why it comes to standing in truth because standing in truth and being in truth is absolutely trusting yourself and who you are and having a solid faith in that 
in you, okay? And so that comes down to absolutely trusting what your gut is telling you and not overriding that with the mental because we're moving away from the mental now. The mental was really um, something that we used more in the physical plane to get things done. Now as we move into the ethereal plane, we move down more into our intuition, into our um, ka part of our soul. Um, because if you've looked into my teachings, um, you'll understand that the ancient Egyptians saw that there was a conscious part of the soul, but also an intuitive part of the soul. Um, it was like our anchor, which was the, um, the ka. And the ba is the conscious part of your soul, is um, your will, is your intent, and it's uh, how you perceive everything through your third eye. So really, um, you know, you want to open that third eye because you can use it but not have it open, you know. And that's what people do at the moment because you've been psyoped into being in the physical and overriding everything all the time with the mental. And so now it's about trusting yourself again and trusting the gut again. And when you see stuff like this and it doesn't add up, you've just got to keep looking into it again and again and again and, and make a determination based on what you see, not what on, you know, the mainstream media and scientists are telling you. And who are these scientists? What, they've gone to a programming institute for a few years and have got this piece of paper now? So they're supposed to tell us shit, you know? Yet now you look at all of these astrophysicists that are finding all of these new galaxies and neuron um, stars and um, different, you know, uh, phenomena out in the universe that they can't explain with their physics law. And so their piece of paper is pretty worthless when it's coming down to that now, isn't it? And so people have got to understand to stop looking at people like that with, you know, oh, wow, you know, they're just so smart because they've done that. I must listen to them. No. Listen to yourself, and if you've done enough of the research and look at the, looked enough at all of the information yourself and gone back to the source of this information as far as you can, your subconscious and consciousness and just your own intellect will piece it together yourself to give you an understanding of it. But just following what everybody else is telling you is not giving you that knowing of thyself. It's about discovering it yourself through your own research and your own knowledge seeking. And so this is why I know that these aren't contrails, okay? And that I can say quite easily that after seeing this one now on the 21st, this one now uh, was on the 14th, and this one's almost a carbon copy for this one. Seen over two days, it's just, you know, I can see. It's starting to pick up again. And it's just going to continue as Ison comes in. And remember, we've got to go through Ison's tail yet as well. So there's a debris field that is coming with Ison. And it started in 2011, okay? Elenin was like the forewarning of Ison. And I'd say they knew about Ison back then. You know, they, they, they did definitely know about Ison way before they let us in on anything about ISON because they can't explain ISON. It's doing all these unusual things. So, you know, all of this talk of it disintegrating and breaking up, it's just no way it's not going to. And, you know, this dirty snowball theory, it makes me laugh and it's why I don't do a lot of stories on Comet Ellen and guys. I mean, sorry, Comet ISON because it's full of crap of this ice ball theory. And so, you, you know, it's not even worth it. You know, if I see a good photo or something that I see that really catches my eye, I'll bring it. But other than that, it's just mainly now we're just getting a lot of crap, you know. We, we need some, some more stuff with, you know, a bit more substance in the science and not what this, you know, establishment is trying to feed us. Anyway, guys, I'll leave it here. But um, check it out. You know, check out this one. This guy down here, I really, um, really love Sangstar. Because he was just an, a, a bloke from Australia that just happened to be out in his backyard and filmed this. And this is when I really got interested in all of this stuff because I knew he'd captured something. And so then when I saw this the other day, I straight away remembered um, Sangstar's video. But I have actually seen very similar ones like this over Peru. Um, and then, you know, seeing this, it's like, and both in November... After this, you know, um, crochet 
uh, magnetic flare, which, oh, by the way, this is what I wanted to tell you guys. And, oh, now I can do over 15 minutes. I don't have to quickly rush and go away. So I just will add this on because it's just a synchronicity that I've found, but it's something that I thought was quite interesting. So we had this, um, you know, magnetic crochet solar flare on the 5th of November, right? Now, look at when we had it, 2212, right? So I was talking about the number synchronicities before. Now, this um, event is called a magnetic crochet because what happens is when the sun actually starts flaring and erupt, and, it, and what happens is it builds up this flare really quickly, our um, ionosphere actually reacts at the very same time, like we're connected, right? And so that happened on the 5th of um, November. Then after that, when I looked at the activity on the sun, for the next week or so, it was like every little flare we had, we registered straight away on all of our data. Now, it's raining really, really heavily right now, so if, I, um, if you hear that in the background, that's what it is. So, um, so on, when we had this uh, magnetic crochet, um, something else happened that was really interesting on that day. And as I said, you know, after that time, um, it was like every little um, flare that we had, we registered straight away on all the data. So I was having a look at the gamma ray burst, right? And uh, on the fifth same date, we had a gamma ray burst, right? From this one called Dorado. Now, Dorado is very interesting, guys, because it's actually from outside our galaxy at, in the large um, Magellan cloud out there. And look at when we actually got this burst, right? 2.04.44, right? And then when you come down here and have a look at the coordinates of right ascension, look at the numbers. 0.44.04.02. So it's, an, it's almost like an anagram for this, for the time. The coordinates for the time it actually burst. And then, after this, we felt every one of those flares for at least the next, at least the next week or two. I think till we had that X flare, and now it seems to have calmed off again a bit. But anyway, I just thought that was really cool, guys. And I know you guys that get the number synchronicities will see how profound this is and, and go, whoa, you know? Because when you do get these number synchronicities all the time, it's, it does start becoming, like, really... Um, full on, you know, because you kind of wonder what the hell. And so to see it actually even play out now when we're getting these gamma ray bursts, it's just confirmation that it is the universe um, all playing out, you know, the way it should. And this is why I'm saying we've got to look, we've got to look beyond our little box, guys. We've got to start looking out further and understand there's bigger influences at work here and we're subject to these influences. All right, well, I will prep um, I will attach everything underneath the video and you guys can uh, check that out for yourselves and as always, peace out.